Well, Razorback fans, it is officially 2024, and there is a lot of things happening here in the state of Arkansas and welcoming in the new year. So let's talk about it here on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors, and I also will be having a new job here very soon, very shortly, which I'll talk about at the end of the podcast today. But appreciate each and every one of you listening in, and Happy New Year to all you Razorback fans out there as it is a celebration of sorts and getting 2024 kicked off on the right foot. And today's episode, of course, is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more because right now new customers get $150 back in bonus bets with any $5 money line bet that they win. That's $150. Bucks. If your team wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Hope everybody's had a wonderful New Year's celebration and weekend and, and everything as uh, it's been insane for me. Absolutely insane. And so I apologize about maybe not having the podcast up on the ready like I uh, have been previously. But uh, as you can tell, if you're watching this video on YouTube, I am broadcasting from a different place. It is not the old usual uh, podcast studio. I'll tell you a little bit more details about it uh, here later. But just wanted to uh, welcome you in to the new year. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the news like KJ Jefferson finding a home. And uh, the, uh, which I'm not going to say it's surprising of where he ended up being, but uh, definitely something of interest and a little good of connection there. So uh, we'll talk about that as well as uh, maybe get into some basketball too. And uh, it's just some of the impressiveness down there. But either way, I felt like since this is the first podcast of 2024, I, I wanted to kind of reflect upon the 2023 year in general for Arkansas and look ahead to the 2024 year. It's going to be a shorter podcast. But I think that the effectiveness will be there. Folks, it was a weird year for Razorback Athletics. Not saying it's a bad year, but it was a weird year. And the reason being is, if you're talking about from January 1 of 2023 to December 31st of 2023, there was in each of the major sports some highs and some lows. In a lot of cases, some low lows. In some other cases, some high highs. And I look back to the spring and looking at Razorback basketball, because of course they started SEC play and around the time of the turn of the new year. And the way that the year went in the regular season is that they didn't do so hot. There was a lot of expectations surrounding the Razorback basketball team last year because you had three McDonald's all Americans. You had uh, a transfer class that was potent. Um, you had, you know, Trevin Brazil coming in. You had Ricky council coming in. You had some really good and really talented players that we got to see a little bit of in Maui. And it was such a fun team to watch. You felt like, man, this could really be a year where it goes to another level for Arkansas. But because of injuries, Trevin Brazil for out for the year and Nick Smith Jr. not being able to see the court as much, Arkansas struggled. They had really no go-to offensive player. Uh, uh, Ricky Council was kind of the guy, which fine player, but I think a lot of people we're really counting on him maybe being more of the bench player coming off to help spark it. But he ended up having to be the offensive threat as well as Devo Davis. Now, there'd be times where you'd have a good game out of a Jalen Graham or a, a Jordan Walsh or even an Anthony Black. But for the most case, it just looked like a team that had been hurt because they were. They were a hurting team. And when it was all said and done at the end of the regular season, it was really hard to feel good about anything. Arkansas finished 10th in the SEC. 10th. And you saw other teams finish ahead of you that you felt like you were going to be better than. I think Arkansas preseason was picked to finish second last year. They finished 10th. Uh, they had some bad losses. The end of the stretch, which was a brutal murderer's row. I think they had at, it was at, at Alabama, at Tennessee, and then out, uh, Kentucky at home to close. And you lost all those games. You limped into the SEC tournament. But you were able to get Nick Smith back. So there was some excitement there. And you beat Auburn. Actually, Nick Smith hit the game winner. Go ahead, shot against Auburn. Auburn won a great team, but at least you got a win. And then you got beat by Texas A&M in the next round. But due to your net ranking, thankfully, you were able to have an NCAA tournament bid. Very high ranking as a 10th team in the SEC ended up being a nine seed. 
So, or an eight seed. I was getting mixed up. But you were in that 8-9 matchup. Didn't feel good. Going up against Illinois to start. They had had their struggles too. You felt like, ah, oh, maybe you'll win. You know, if, if really things go according to plan. And you did, actually. You, you looked pretty good against Illinois. It was close there in the beginning, but then you pulled away. But in the next game, you had the number one seed, Kansas. The defending national champions, Kansas. They didn't have Bill Self, but they were still Kansas. Nobody went into that game feeling good. But then you won. And what was one of the most exciting games that you had seen under the Muss era, where you were down by double digits, and you had not ever come back from double digits. It seemed like every time you got down double digits in the season, you were dead in the water. But you came back and you won. Elation, celebration, team figured it out. Devo's crying on the court afterwards. You're going back to the Sweet 16. What an elating experience. Now, you ended up losing to the eventual national champions, UConn. But I still hold belief that if you didn't have to play a team like UConn, you played somebody else, I think you would have, uh, I think you would have gone to at least the Elite Eight, possibly the Final Four. But it's neither here nor there. But still, all things considered, it was a good end to the season. Finishing in Vegas, another Sweet 16 appearance, eight and three now from us in three seasons uh, as Arkansas's coach in the NCAA tournament. Couldn't ask for anything more. And then baseball comes around. In baseball, there's always high expectations. But you get the big news of your ace pitcher getting hurt and lost for the year, Tommy Johns and Jackson Williams. Second year in a row, you're like, wow, great. It's like, if that wasn't bad enough, you had injuries to pretty much everybody on the team. You lost multiple pitchers for the season. You lost multiple fielders and batters for good parts of the season. You're talking about Wagner. You're talking about Josenberger. Uh, you know, you think about uh, Peyton Stovall and the injury that he went through. Think about, uh, you know, the rotations there at catcher until they finally figured out with Parker Rowland, but you had some changes there too. And then you had even somebody like, um, you know, I guess but most consistent was probably like a Caleb Cowley, Kendall Diggs, who had to step up out of the DH role to play an outfield. Like all three of your outfielders were hurt at one point in time. So it was wild. And if you would have said that before the year started, hey, you're going to lose all these pitchers, you're going to lose all these batters, you're going to have these issues, and like, man, this ain't our year. But somehow, the team won the SEC regular season, or he's tied for it, and then won the SEC West. How? What an incredible, gutsy performance by them each and every series. Unfortunately for them, it looked like they ran out of gas, they just didn't have it, and they ran into a TCU team that was really good, and TCU just beat them, flat, plain and simple. Just beat them in the regionals, that they got to host a super regional. They were national seed. Didn't end well, but at least they had the good feeling of, man, just imagine if that team was fully healthy. What it could have, should have, but if they were healthy, I think it's a whole different ball game. No pun intended. So that was disappointing to the end, but you felt at least, hey, get these guys back. You got to give them a lot of credit for what they were able to do and accomplish, all things considered. And then we get to football. Football was the only one that really didn't have a whole lot of good, to be honest. Baseball had good throughout the regular season, didn't end well in postseason. Basketball had not really much in regular season, but ended well in postseason. Football had none of it. None of it. The only good feeling that I think came from anybody was when Arkansas beat Florida for the first time down in Gainesville in overtime, coming off the bye week, Kenny Guyton beat the OC, and you were at least able to get an SEC win. That was very short-lived, but that was about the only time where I think people actually felt good. But you had close games. You know, you lost to Bama on the road by three. You lost to LSU on the road by three. You lost to Ole Miss on the road by seven. Lost at home to BYU by seven. Um, you lost to a and I think it was by 12. Just all these close games right there. And in some cases, you had it. You had the game in your grasp to win. And don't get me started in the Mississippi State game. He lost by four. I'm not going to say the score, but it was four points. But overall, it was pretty disappointing across the board. Until the hiring of Bobby Petrino. That changed everyone's mind. Changed everyone's feeling on everything about Arkansas football in the offseason. Now, it's not to say that everyone's just all in thinking Arkansas is going to go undefeated or anything like that. I'm not trying to even convey that message. But what I am saying is that at least there's something new 
and the return of Bobby Petrino can provide some sort of feeling of a possibility. A possibility that it's going to be better. That's going to be great. And I think that with what they got going on right now um, and some of the moves that they're making, it is possible. And it'll be the most likely, but it's possible. So the point is, is looking ahead to 2024, and we'll end on this. Baseball, man, team looks good. Everybody stay healthy. Team looks national championship caliber good. I'm not saying they'll win it, but they're good enough to. Basketball, well, there's some struggles here, but you can see it. Hopefully they stay healthy, but they've really played so much better to end the non-conference slate, especially in the past three halves of basketball. They got Auburn coming up, which is a big one. But with Muss and everything, you feel good about at least being in the mix. You got work to do, but you feel good about the ending of where it could be. And then the football, surely you'll be better in four and eight, right? Surely. But we'll have to wait and see how all that roster plans out and everything. But the point is, I think 2024 is going to be a better year for Arkansas overall. You know, maybe maybe football isn't great, but I think they go better than four and eight. You know, basketball may have its struggles, but I think that they finish above 10th in the SEC. And baseball, man, as I said, they're they're just going to be so good. They better, as long as everyone stays healthy, I don't know why there won't be any reason that this team doesn't make it back to at least Omaha again. So things are going to be okay. Maybe annoying now and maybe frustrating now, but get a new idea, new ideology of what it'll look like. I think you'll really appreciate and enjoy it of what it could become. We'll talk about uh, KJ Jefferson uh, here in just a little bit, but folks, uh, I got to tell you, the NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get on on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you did a $5 bet. That's right, a $150 bucks in bonus bets back win or lose. The app is so easy to use that there are so many different ways that you can be with it, like the same game parlays that they have that are live. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. It's the best way to find popular parlays and just so much more. So go to vanduel.com slash locked on to make your first bet an easy layup. It's FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, so uh, moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, Again, some of you may not even care about this. So that's news nonetheless. I have a paper cut on my finger and it hurts. Um, But KJ Jefferson officially announced that he will be heading to UCF. Um. He made the announcement on January 1st that he is going to be taking his talents to Gus Malzahn in Orlando, hanging out at the Mouse House, and is going to be trying to recapture uh, some of the great plays and the great moments that he had from this previous season. So, yeah, that's it. And a lot of people had some thoughts on this. And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. KJ, when he left... People feel a certain way about him. You know, he didn't have a good year this year. People didn't really like certain things. And we talked about all that. We don't need to rehash it. But I will say that when I heard that KJ is going to UCF, I had a I had a moment of like, man, best of luck. I have no problem with KJ Jefferson. I have no problem with Gus Malzahn and UCF. Like they're not even a you're not gonna play him. It's not some sort of like big recruiting battle that you're going to lose. Like it's honestly, it's the best case scenario for me because I, again, I like KJ, but I didn't want to face KJ next year because as we all know, Razorback fans know, especially anytime you face a former player or a player from your state on another team, they usually go crazy on you. So I was really happy to see that that wasn't the case and he wasn't going to be coming or going to another SEC school. But it hit me, and I was just like, man, I, I really, truly wish K.J. Jefferson nothing but the best of luck. He's the record holder in all time in Arkansas and for most statistical categories in football. And I think that he's going to have a bright future, and I think he's going to a good spot. I mean, Miles on, say what you want about him, but uh, quarterbacks that have the skill set of what Cam, uh, K.J. Jefferson has, people keep comparing him to Cam Newton, but considering all the things that he has going for him, I'm like, hey, that makes sense. And I also believe something that may not be mentioned because people are maybe wondering like, why UCF. 
Let's not forget that old SJ Tui's down there with Malzahn. And SJ Tui, as we know, was at Arkansas and was very involved with a lot of the recruitment of the players under Chad Morris, one of those being KJ Jefferson. So take that in consideration. But I honestly hope that KJ Jefferson goes to the UCF and blows it up, just kills it. And fits in a system that works and ends up being one of the best players in the Big 12. I really do. I wish him nothing but the best of luck. Y'all can disagree. That's fine. But I am. I'm going to wish him nothing but the best of luck. Uh, but also in uh, some uh, good news for Arkansas, how about Keon Minifield, guys? Now, I know we haven't talked basketball much, and we'll talk more about it tomorrow because, again, it's just been stressful, and I'll tell you why. But how about Keon Minifield in his third game? He was named SEC Player of the Week because he was able to kill it against UNC Wilmington. And I was there at Bud Walton Arena. He had 32 points, 32 points, 8 of 14 from the field. He had 3 of 7 from three-point range, 13 of 17 from the free throw line, and drew nine fouls while committing zero. He had five assists and four rebounds. That is, I mean, you're not going to get a better performance out of anybody, and that is his third game as a Razorback, third. You don't think that he didn't make a huge impact in getting him back and him getting him eligible? I don't want to put too much of an expectation on it because we see players all the time have really nice games out of the blue. And, you know, I think back, I'm not trying to make the comparison, but I'm just saying like Jalen Graham was someone last year. He had a game where he had 28 points. He was against Florida. So great games happen. I want to see more. But man, you can really see though from Keon Minifield the type of game that he has, the type of uh, uh, adrenaline that he has, the energy that he has, the coachability that he has, and the difference that he can make on the team. Not only as a scorer, but also as a distributor. So... What a spark that Arkansas needed so desperately, so desperately. I can't wait to see what he does in SEC play. Arkansas's got Auburn coming up. Not going to be easy, but uh, it should be should be a great game, and can't wait to see everybody back at Bud Walton Arena. We'll talk about some uh, significant news for me uh, here on the other side of the break, so stay with us on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, folks, um, let's address the elephant in the room. Uh, first off, I'm not, before you guys start freaking out, because I'm sure you guys are getting tired of me anyways. I'm not going to announce what's happening officially here on this platform, like in, and on my Locked On podcast. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about it tomorrow, because today at noon, roughly, lunchtime, it, we are going to discuss that and just be sure to follow me on my social media. It's still at buzz John neighbors, even though I don't work at one Oh three, seven, the buzz anymore. And I loved, uh, you know, the send off that they gave me and I loved the, the fashion and that they treated me. So nothing but love for the best sports talk radio station in the state far and away. One Oh three, seven, the buzz this awesome. Uh, but you know, I got, I got a new venture I'm coming into and I'm moving back to Fayetteville. I'm here in Fayetteville now, and I'll tease it a little bit too, but if you're watching on YouTube, you probably see a backdrop of something you've never seen before, and like, where in the world is this guy? He looks like he's in some sort of like uh, corporate office. Well, in a way, it is. This is my new office space. It's, it, you, know, you, may, you can only see a little bit of it. Again, we'll, we'll talk more about it tomorrow, but this is my office space. But for those of you wondering like why it's been so crazy, why I haven't been able to record as many podcasts and everything, is because I've been having to move up here, back to Fayetteville. Little Rock was great to me. I loved Little Rock. I loved the people of Little Rock. I had a great four-year run in that city. All my friends, some of my closest friends, are there in Little Rock, and I'll, you know, I'm going to miss them. But, you know, opportunities present themselves sometimes, and this was an opportunity that I couldn't pass up. And this is home. I'm from Fayetteville. I'm a Fayetteville kid. You know, I don't, I'm not a Northwest Arkansas kid. I'm a Fayetteville kid. You know, the old Fayetteville where, you know, I grew up, we had 30,000 people here. You know, I remember as a kid. So I went K through 12, public schools, and here at Fayetteville. This is where I, this is where I belong. This is where I need to be. And when this opportunity presented itself, I got so excited. And I was sad to leave the buzz because I was not looking to leave the buzz, but I was so excited about this opportunity. And I know it's going to be incredible. And for those of you who are wondering, don't worry. I'm going to continue to do the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. And hopefully find a more of a consistent schedule that I can get on. So don't be going crazy thinking that I'm leaving this. But it's just been great so far. And I hope it continues to be great. But for those of you who are wondering, 
about what's going on, like what's the announcement going to be, all of that, just follow me on social media. All right, still buzz John Neighbors, even though I'm not working, I'm trying to work on the handles changing, but that's been an, an issue because uh, social media makes it so difficult sometimes. But buzz John Neighbors, go to that. Twitter, Rx, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Go on there and there'll be an official announcement that you guys will hear about and I think you're going to be really excited about it. It's going to be awesome. I, I can't, I, as you can tell, I can't even contain my excitement. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. But appreciate everybody listening in to Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get that from me on Twitter, Buzz John Neighbors, for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same channel. Same podcast time, same podcast channel. Tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody.